ability to move forward need to make sure that we put our hand back like we would in combat and grab our brothers and sisters and pull them forward with us. It, it's a truly a, a blessing that you're doing that. Now, talk to me about the song Day to Night, because we're going to be playing that for our audience right after this interview. Uh, tell us the story behind the song, and uh, tell us uh, tell us everything you can about uh, the meaning behind it for you. Wow. So every time I think of this song, um, I like to say we're still at war. Yeah, a lot of people in our country have turned a blind eye to what's happening recently and uh, what's happening in the Middle East now. The fact that my war is basically lost now because those children that I was fighting for have now are adults and were being killed. You know? So um, day to night was sparked. I, I have a friend that I worked with or I work with here at Palo Alto Fire and his son is a Marsoc Marine. One day we found out that maybe his son had been lost in combat. It was a crazy day um, because there was a lot of madness and not a lot of real information coming out. It turned out that his son wasn't killed, but in the firefight that had ensued from insider attacks, uh, Sergeant Charles Strong was killed uh, in his last day of deployment in Afghanistan. Oh, man. So, wow. when I heard that, I was rocked because for me, it's something that I went through every day I got closer to going home. Um, I continued to say, just one more day, just one more day, one more day outside the line, that's it, one more day and we got this. Uh, so I wrote the song Day to Night, and it was one of those things where it just came to me. I this I wrote it six months to the date of Charles's death, which I didn't even know, but I voice recorded it on my phone, um, and it turned out later I wrote it exactly six months to the date of when he had passed. And I sat down at the piano. I didn't have a song to write. I didn't have an idea. And I began to play, and this song came out. And uh, I, I remember the line, just one more time that I must cross those lines and I'm home. When I wrote that, I knew what I was writing, and I knew who I was writing about. And I finished that song in 20 minutes, probably. Usually when they go quick like that, from a writer's perspective, when they go quick like that, they're going to be, they're, they're something special. And I finished it. I knew it was special. The moment I finished it, I picked up the phone and I called my producer. After I listened to it and completely broke it down, um, I called my producer and I said, hey, Pat, we, we've got our next single. So within a month, I was in the studio, recorded that song. In my head, I had already built a video to this song, and I had said we were doing a video. Um, without money, with nothing, I called every financer, or not financer, but every uh, video maker in L.A. and said, let me talk to my financers and, you know, uh, I'll get back to you, but I need a bid on this video concept. So ultimately, bid comes in. It's in a range that, if need be, I would have put it up myself. Out of left field, three days, five days maybe before actually going to shoot the video, American Hero Clothing steps up and pays for the video. We are taking, and we, I, I called Taylor Strong, who's the wife of Charles Strong, and spoke to her several times before finally inviting her out to play herself in the video. So Taylor plays herself in the video. She was eight months pregnant when Charles died. She heard the f song for the first time on her first Mother's Day ever. There's just so much special that's built around this. Um, it's crazy to think of. And while this was happening two days before the video shoot, I was also, my father had a cardiac arrest on the table for an endoscopy and was in a coma in his last days of his life. Uh, as I flew to Kentucky to see him, then flew back to California to shoot the video, and then spent the last 14 days of his life with him. So it, it's something that spiritually you can't, you know, put all these pieces together. It, you can't, you know, write a story this good. It, it's it's just what happened in life at this time. It, it, it seems like it was all meant to fit together from from what you're saying, and it, it, just even before hearing the song which we're going to play in a moment, 
uh, just wow. I mean, the, the timing, uh, the subject matter, the fact that you said that it wrote itself, that usually means to me, at least when it comes with the creative process, that uh, there's something more going on than just you writing down uh, the notes and, and the time, you know? So what we're going to do right now is we're going to play the song. And then when we come back, I want you to tell everybody where they can find out more about you, where they can buy the song, and where they can support you and and, uh, any future projects you have. You know, all I can say about that, Russ, is, wow. Great I mean, I, great song. I, there was more to the interview, but we have so much more to do. I mean, we got a little bit of time left, but uh, final thought time, pal. Gene, you got to play me one other song that I've been craving 
all year. Oh, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I hope you have it ready. I it have it ready. Long. Listen, it's the only day. request I usually have for this show, and I, this is it. It's Veterans Day. By the way, before we get to that, go to iTunes, look up John Preston, look for the song Day to Night. It's available on iTunes and other music outlets. Uh, proceeds from that, a portion of them will be going to the family of Sergeant uh, Strong. And uh, it's it's a beautiful thing that uh, what John is doing in, in reaching out to veterans. 22 suicides a day by veterans. It's absolutely monstrous. And that's veterans. If you look at the people who are currently in the reserves and active duty, there's more than one a day of just those folks. So it's a real problem. We need to stand up for them like they've stood up for us. But listen, it's, all not gonna, it's not going to be just very introspective and inspiring and uplifting stuff right now. Time to get to a little fun. And this is what Russ is talking about right this now. This is uplifting, Gene. This, this is one of the best things we've ever done. I am foregoing my final thought. This is from our Brooklyn GOP radio days. It's a little distorted and a little loud. But you're going to love it. It's a Yak Attack tribute. One of that, the originals. One of the That OGs. he did way back in the day. There'll be references to old news stories. Listen to this. We're heading out. Back to our normal format next week, folks. After this, we're shutting it down. We're out of here on the live. Take a listen to this, and uh, we'll be back Stay next week. Stay tuned for the final thought, though. Yes. God bless, guys. Listen to this, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. We can bring things down a little bit, Russ. <sighs> it's been a taxing day. It has been. But it's time for Yak's segment. Let's let our good friend, Yak Bard. And this is my favorite segment. I know of many of you, too. Go ahead, Let's Yak. turn it over to Yak. Go ahead, Yak. Thanks, James. Thanks, Russ. Being that this recording is going to be played two days after Veterans Day, so I do not want to miss out my opportunity to salute our armed forces, our veterans, and those who have fought for us throughout the generations to preserve our freedom and our quality of life, liberty, and justice for all. That's beautiful, yeah. And on the subject of what our armed forces do for us and for the globe, I sh- want to salute them for doing a fantastic job in the Philippines, helping out those unfortunate souls who have lost their homes and family and the many lives that, that have been destroyed over there. I just want to see, I just want to say that I'm so proud to be an American. As are, we're proud that you are an American, Yak. And God bringing it yeah. back to America, though, and want to talk about quality of life. Nothing is more... No, quality of life would describe the quality of our health care. Okay. And as we know, we were supposed to give our president his... I mean, we were supposed to take his word... A word, a lie that he has repeated 35 times at least. That's right. At least. Lied to our American, by, lied to the American people. And right, abetted right, 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 by the Democrat scoundrels that have, have, many of them have said up until recently, don't change anything. There's an awesome plan. Run with it. Go with it. Take it to the polls. Don't worry, you won't lose your health care. Drudge says a million have in California alone. Wait, 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 wait. Between Glenn and Yak, what the hell are we talking about right now? <laughs> We're talking about a lot focus scout. Keep saying the house. Right, I'm sorry, I apologize. Okay. As it was said. As it was saying. Listen, we can Obamacare turned out to be a lie. That's what you were saying. So we've been going from making fun of this of the website and of its failures on late night to now everybody knowing the lie and scandal and scum that this president has turned out to be. And that's Yakov just... Bard. And that is Yakov Bard. Great job, brother. God bless the USA, Yak. Indeed. God bless, God bless <laughs> yes, the USA. Indeed. Our position has been compromised. It's time to roll out. Report for debriefing at www.behindenemylinesradio.us and look for regular communications via Facebook and Twitter at BEL underscore radio. You are the resistance behind enemy lines. Part of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network.
A Rock Radio Production. Copyright 2015. Back in seven days. Out.